Welcome to the Pacific Magazine. I'm Army Sergeant Matt Cromer. I'm in Northern Territories, Australia, to cover two main exercises, Crocodile Strike and Kawari. First, we visit Crocodile Strike, where the Marine Rotational Forces Darwin works side by side with the Australian Army in some intense exercises. The Australian Army invited some corpsmen to their artillery range for some hands-on training and a way to say thanks for all the help and hard work they've done during the exercise. Well, they've arrived uh, to uh, have a meet and greet uh, with our soldiers and, uh, and, the, and have a brief on the equipment uh, to, to, to see the other side of the fence. So we're pretty much part of the STP and uh, we were afforded the opportunity by the Aussies to come and fire some weapons. Us as corpsmen uh, and the medical field, uh, we really never get a chance to do the operation side of it, firing guns. So they gave us, we were grateful for the opportunity and we decided to come out here and uh, fire up some guns. The Aussies made sure the corpsmen were right there, ready to fire when the range went hot. And for some, this was a heart pounding experience. Nervous, uh, it's an adrenaline rush. You don't know what you're gonna do. All you know is that you're waiting, waiting to put that pin on and, and pull on it and you just wanna make sure that you're just not messing nothing up. And it's that first pulling the trigger the first time that's just adrenaline pumping because you've never done it before and it's your first time and that's real life fire. So it's uh, a neat experience, one that I'll never forget. I'm the Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. I'm out here in the outback right now at the Urban Breaching Demo Range. Right now, we have a bunch of Marines who are building a house only to destroy it the only way they know how, with explosives. The Marine engineers are hard at work constructing a breach house in the outback and preparing explosives for the range tomorrow morning. They are looking over every little last detail, making sure that everything is ready to go and done to perfection so that tomorrow they will be able to train as they fight. We're simply practicing, so when we have to do it out in country, we're proficient at it, and we get the mission accomplished, like I said. This, that's that's the main, our main concern is the mission. The marine engineers use different tactics to breach the walls and doors. So we use a, a handful of explosives and expedient charges, such as, uh, we use things such as water, we use uh, deck cord mainly, and we put it together for uh, different types of uh, obstacles or things that are in our way. Breach after breach, they used different styles of explosives, and in the end, the only thing that was left was the floor and scraps of wood. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. Mass Marine! We're here at Crocodile Strike with the U.S. Marine Corps engineers and the Australian Army engineers. Everyone is standing behind me admiring the bridge they just built because it's going to be used in a demolition exercise. Australian Army and U.S. Marine demolition teams decided to team up for one last exercise at Crocodile Strike. Both forces constructed a bridge only to be taken down the best way they know how. Uh, what you see here, we've got saddle charges uh, designed to push the piers in this direction. Uh, and then you've got the cuts along the cross members along, along here. Both sides share their ideas and expertise on the bridge demolition. And for some, this is a once in a lifetime experience. So it's not often uh, back in the rear that we've ever, ever get to do this. And even I've done multiple tours across Iraq and Afghanistan and never had an opportunity to get in on this. So to be out here and be able to get some of my young Marines on it right at the beginning of their careers and seeing some of these Australians getting to do it right off the bat, it's a, a great experience for them. I mean, it's just something you don't see 13, 14 years in. And here, I've got guys that are a year into the Marine Corps now, and they're going to get a chance to do a shot that's just going to be hard to get a hold of anywhere else. A safe distance away, the Australian commander gives the go to take down the bridge. Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. We move a little farther into the outback for Exercise Quarry, where U.S., Australia, and China join up for a challenging survival exercise with a lot of working parts. The first day of Kawari kicks off with the most basic but difficult and essential skills these participants will need. Australian Army Sergeant Rob Nelson shows his class the importance of improvised tool construction. So the two things we taught them today is how to make a digging stick. So digging is really important. You need to be able to dig for fire, to make fire, like dig a fire pit, 
uh, dig for your shelter, dig a toilet, all those type of things. Uh, so really important, uh, one of the basic functions that we need to do in the bush. And the other thing is a navigation stick so that we can teach the guys how to navigate without a compass in case they ever get into a situation where they require that skill. The participants listen carefully as the instructors go into great detail. The class heads off to find and make their first tool, the navigation stick, <laughs> but are quickly called back to the classroom and notice all the instructors have lined up. The next lesson is fire. That was a fun one. Yeah. Man has been making fire for many thousands of years and, and before that we've been making fire for hundreds of thousands of years. We've got evidence to say that. And we knew how to do it. In the modern age, we just rely on a box of matches or a cigarette lighter and it gets its fire, or we turn a switch to get fire. So this is really taking us back to our forefathers, to our links, and it's just this whole activity is a life skills course. It's really stuff we should our parents or our forefathers would have instinctively known and we're, as modern men we forget in our comfortable offices and our comfortable modern life so yeah, it's, a, it's a great skill to have. The participants are not allowed to leave for the evening until each of them successfully starts a fire while the instructors watch. The first day of training has ended but Kawari has only begun. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. The linguists at Exercise Kawari are helping the instructors communicate with the participants. Not only are they translating the Aussie instructors for the Chinese members, but also with some word issues between the Americans and the Australians. There's only one catch. There's no such thing as a linguist in the Australian Army. So the way the Australian Army uh, uses its interpreter capability is all of us, all of the interpreters have a full-time role. So for example, myself, I'm a cavalry officer. So that's our 24-7 job. Our interpreter skills is a secondary skill set uh, that we get trained on through a year-long course, or we have prior knowledge as uh, native Chinese speakers. No matter what other job they have in the Army, these translators jump at the opportunity to use their skills, as well as keeping themselves fresh on their linguistics by helping people who speak different languages come together. I think you feel a sense of closeness that you can't feel if you can't connect with people. If you want to learn, people who want to learn another language are people who uh, generally want to empathise with people and it doesn't matter whether you're using another language, whether it be verbal or um, gesticulation, you can actually get the message across. The translators take shifts on each of the classes, but still end up at the campsite because they can't resist interacting with all the participants and honing their craft. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. Today, the Kawari participants are going to meet the Daily River community. They're bringing a whole bunch of different delicacies that the participants can enjoy. Also, they're going to welcome them to country, which is a way to ward off evil spirits and welcome them to their area. Kawari has gathered to meet the Daily River community. The indigenous locals have come to meet the students and wish them well. They have come to introduce everyone to their culture and way of life. They first start by bringing in their favorite local food caught fresh in the outback known as bush tucker. They brought magpie geese, barramundi, yams, short and long neck turtles. They start to prepare and cook the food as people watch and take notes. While the food rests over the hot coals, everyone follows the elders for a sacred tradition called Welcome to Country. This tradition is a blessing of ancestral spirits that cover this land. The blessing takes place at Glass Creek, where both your mind and body are put at harmony here in the Northern Territory. Hey, Welcome to Country is for everybody. Kind of am familiar with you know spirits and whatnot, uh, living in Hawaii for so long. Uh, we b believe in the uh, Amakua, um, and it's our family spirits that protect us. And so hearing that, it, it, it was a great honor because knowing that the people here believe so heavily in spirits and their protectors uh, kind of was making me feel like home. Once the final blessing finishes, the male elders and young boys have one more tradition before the feast can commence. A traditional dance known as corroboree involves all the men of the community with the elders playing the music while the children go through traditional themes. Everyone looks on with amazement as more members of the community join in on the dance, celebrating their ancestors and the future of daily living. When we pass it over to children, we teach them right away. When they grow big, they grow elders and they learn quick. So 
they'll do them dancing when they go anywhere for ceremony. And Somewhere along the way, if there's a ceremony like this, they might go without us. So they got this culture, and they follow culture. the culture. The food is ready, and everyone with stomachs growling rushes to line up to taste the authentic Daily River feast. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. In Exercise Kuari, a small group of guys have a very unique job. These men are called the Northern Guardians or Croc Watch. Not only do they enjoy their job, but they take it very seriously. My job title is actually to operate and uh, ensure that the safe passage of these persons and that's for me to stand in an area and make sure that because uh, we've got there's a couple of crocodiles have been sighted in this area just to make sure that if there are any crocodiles sighted that we identify them um, call them out evacuate the area and if the crocodiles come too close to uh, the students take appropriate action. All of the participants in Kawari understand the importance of croc watch and acknowledge the guys hard work and patience. You get a, yeah, an occasional thank you and an occasional stare. Um, it's kind of funny watching them cross the river really nervously. Because <laughs> um, not obviously, you know, the Americans and Chinese, I don't think they have crocodiles as polluting their, um, the waterways as much as we do. So, you know, I think they're pretty appreciative that we're there making sure they're not going to get eaten. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Northern Territory, Australia. That does it for this edition of Pacific Magazine. I'm Army Sergeant Matt Cromer. From all of us here at AFN Pacific, thanks for watching.